Hey, everybody. Welcome to All There Is. I'm your host, Kelly Bargabas. Thanks for tuning in today. We are coming up on Father's Day weekend. For some reason, Father's Day isn't quite as polarizing as Mother's Day. Or maybe that is just my own bias and misperception because I come at it differently since I'm a woman. But I do know that Father's Day can still be a painful day for some people. For those who lost their dads way too young or suddenly or unexpectedly or in a very tragic way, maybe to illness maybe to death or addiction, prison, abandonment, or maybe they have an estranged relationship with their dad for many different reasons. Maybe there was parental alienation going on. Maybe they grew up in a divorced family and the relationship with the dad just fell by the wayside or succumbed to the pressures of moving through that reality of divorce and what it does to children. Whatever it is, I know that Father's Day can still be a tough day. I also believe in our culture that we place really unfair expectations on our boys and men and we don't always make sure they know it's okay to embrace their vulnerability. So I just wanted to take a minute today to say it is okay to be vulnerable. I've always been lucky enough to have a lot of strong men in my life starting with my dad. I have two brothers, one older, one younger. Those are very different dynamics too. Both of my brothers are fathers themselves. I have four nephews. I have three stepsons, uncle cousin. So I've been around a lot of men in my life. And because I started a career in finance and business and was in the corporate world starting in the late 80s, early 90s, I've spent most of my career working with men. I've often been the only woman in the room. And believe me, I've seen it all. I've seen all the bad behavior. I've seen the toxic masculinity and the sexism and all all of that. But I'm not here to talk about all the problems with men on this episode. We do enough of that myself included. As we head into Father's Day weekend, I want to take this time today to celebrate men. And I'm going to start by talking about the most important man in my life, who is my dad. No diss to my husband. I love him very much. He is the most important man in my life now. But, you know, there's no denying, especially for daughters, that their relationship with their dad is extremely important and impactful and really sets the stage for so many things in a woman's life. So I wanted to do a Father's Day episode mostly to pay honor and homage to the first man I ever loved and the one that has had the most profound influence in my life. In this podcast, All There Is, we share the human experience and Because I'm a woman, most of what I write about and share about is from what I observe and experience as a woman. I write a lot about my mom. I don't write about my dad as much. I think because I relate to my mother differently than I do my dad because we're both women, but it doesn't mean that he's any less important or impactful in my life because he is maybe even more so. I do write about him a little bit in my leadership book, Here to Lead. I found that when I was researching and writing that book, I I really realized that he was the earliest leader who had influenced me. So there's a lot of things that I credit my dad with my work ethic, my common sense and perspective on the world, my faith. He and my mom really started from scratch the legacy of faith that is grown in our family and hopefully will continue for generations to come. He started it. so And he's also the premier example of agape and unconditional love in my life. And I say all this, I don't want to give you the sense that he's a perfect man. He's not a perfect man by any stretch. Nobody is. And there comes a time in every daughter's life where we have to realize and make peace with the fact that our dads are not perfect because as little girls, we grow up in awe of this man who's in our life who's so strong and protects us and loves us and sometimes we place unrealistic expectations on them without even knowing that we're doing it and we you know we think they're perfect and it can sometimes be a really painful process to go through as you venture into adulthood to realize that your parents and especially your dad isn't perfect and my dad isn't and that's okay but there are areas of his life that to me are perfect his faith and his walk with God, his love for people and for those around him. 
His word is solid and good. He's just a good man. One of the most successful people I know. And he would probably, if he was here right now, as I was saying this, he would probably laugh because I know he doesn't view himself as traditionally successful, like how the world measures success. You know, he's not a millionaire. He didn't retire with a million dollars in the bank. But in my eyes and in the eyes of many and all of us who know and love him, he's the most successful person we know. He was born in 19. 19- He grew up on a farm, worked hard. He actually dropped out of high school to join the Marines and was honorably discharged from the Marines. He married my mother 61 years ago, and they're still married. So he has, he's maintained a marriage for 61 years. He has maintained sobriety for more than 45 years. Alcohol almost killed him when I was a little girl, and He got help. He turned it around. He's been sober for a little more than 45 years. He raised five kids with no support system, really, no extended family that was there to help with child care or or anything, really. So with no high school education, blue-collar jobs, he raised five kids. And he raised five kids who were self-sufficient and still loved to hang out with him. He's been a servant of God for more than 45 years. 20 of those were official on staff at a church in Syracuse. And the rest of those years, he just served God unofficially by visiting people in the hospital, visiting people in need, giving, just giving, giving money, giving of his time, giving his prayers, doing whatever he could to help people. And he still does that today at almost 83 years old. He finds people even older than him who are lonely and need friendship. And he ministers to people all the time. So in my eyes, He is the epitome of success in this world that we live in. It's also fair to say that my father is the voice inside my head most of the time. He is not only the king of dad jokes and puns. He also has a way of unloading wisdom in these one-liners containing the most original metaphors and analogies that generations today might not even understand because they're maybe dated. And he says things like, any job worth doing is worth doing right. Put a little elbow grease into it. I'm busier than a one-legged rooster in a three-story hen house. Busier than a one-armed paper hanger with an itch. Hard work never killed anyone. If you don't work, you don't eat. It's not the ups and downs in life that will get you. It's the jerks. It's nothing to me. If you don't have a dog in the fight, walk away. If they got you by the balls, your heart's not far behind. The corn will be knee high by the 4th of July. That guy could screw up a two-car funeral. He couldn't lead anybody out of a paper bag. She's sick in bed in two chairs. That old battle axe. Shit rolls downhill. Excuses are like belly buttons. Everybody has one. People spend half their lives climbing up Fool's Hill and the other half trying to figure out how to get down. Sin doesn't look good on anybody. Everybody deserves a second chance. None of us are getting out of this alive. And one of my personal favorites that he says all the time when we're saying goodbye after a visit, if I don't see you in the future, I'll see you in the pasture true farm boy saying, I think. And my father was a foreman at a gravel pit for more than 20 years. And really the whole time I was growing up until I graduated high school, he taught me that leaders work hard and side by side with their team, willing to do whatever was necessary. He gave me my work ethic and the practical aspect of my leadership. You know, leadership is something that I've been passionate about my whole life. And when he said things like any job worth doing is worth doing well, he really meant it. I heard it so many times throughout my life, and I still hear it in my head whenever I'm tempted to take a shortcut. My father never asked his guys on his team to do anything he wasn't willing to do himself. He left the house every morning before 5 a.m. with a black lunchbox in hand. It didn't matter what we had going on the night before. He got up every day at the same time. He took me and my two sisters to work with him long before take your daughters to work day was a thing. I don't even think it's a thing anymore, but back in the 90s, they came up with this thing to empower young girls and encouraged parents to take their daughters to work. My father did it in the 70s. Besides sitting in the trailer eating butterscotch candies with Remy, the guy who weighed the trucks as they left the gravel pit and took the tickets so he could bill the customers, me and my sisters had a front row seat in the dump trucks and the loaders alongside my dad or his workers who'd give us rides. 
My father worked alongside his crew, and for the riskiest and scariest of jobs, he sent himself. At the gravel pit, there was a crusher that took large stones and rocks and crushed them into number one or number two stone, as it's known in that world. Occasionally, the chute would get plugged, and the only way to unplug it would be to send somebody down the conveyor belt. My dad didn't send the smallest or youngest guy. He didn't send the new guy or the one nobody liked. My dad shimmied himself down a 40-foot conveyor belt on his back, holding a hammer and chisel. There wasn't enough room to sit up or move your feet when you got to the bottom. After he hammered and chiseled the stone that had been causing the problem into pieces, he shimmied back up the belt. He said it was like crawling through a pipe on your back, and you couldn't let your mind wander or you could get claustrophobic and panic very quickly. He had one of his guys stand close by in case he got stuck and needed to be pulled out with a rope, and also to make sure nobody turned the crusher on while he was in there. My dad drove the dump truck, ran the bulldozer, and led his men while working side by side. He was the OG of the roll your sleeves up leader. In business today, we use phrases like, this is a hands-on position or roll your sleeves up roll to make sure people know we expect them to work. I will forever be grateful to my dad for his work ethic and practical get it done mentality that definitely transferred to me. I've also heard him say many times that you only find out what you're really made of in times of crisis. When the pressure's on and the heat is rising, that's when you see the cracks. My dad was talking about an engine, of course, but also people. Overheating and stressful operating conditions can cause cracks to develop in a car's cylinder head. And when a cylinder head is extremely damaged, it can start to vent exhaust directly into the engine space, which will then cause smoke to billow out from under the hood, and your cracked head will no longer be hidden from your view or anyone around you. The smoke is a telltale sign that your car has been under enough heat and stress to cause cracks in the head. But it's also when the heat rises that we find out what we're made of. Cracks may be the result of heat and stress, but it is also the cracks that let the light in. I've experienced this in my own life, and I'm sure you have too. It can be during those times of intense heat and crisis that you find out what you're made of, and you learn and discover what you know and believe about yourself, what you know and believe about this world, and how you want to be known and seen by others, how you want to show up in this world. Why am I sharing all this? What does it have to do with you? I think it's a way to celebrate men and fathers on Father's Day weekend. It's to share with you my human experience. I realize how lucky I am to have the dad that I have. I don't take it lightly. I'm very thankful and grateful for him as he's, you know, in this stage of his life. He'll be 83 in November. You know, he it's been challenging for him, especially a guy of his generation. It's been challenging for him to age and to not be able to do all the things he used to do with his body. And it's frustrating and it's hard for me to watch him be frustrated. And if I could really get him to listen to me, I do tell him this, but I don't know that he's always in a place to hear it. So maybe I'll I'll say it to my listeners and hope that it resonates with somebody out there who may struggle if you're not struggling today. At some point, you know, you may lose what you identify as your manhood or what our culture determines is how we value men. You know, in my dad's generation, that's how we valued men, right? By their hard work and what they could do physically. And that's what my dad identified with. So for him, it's been really tough to age and lose some of those physical abilities because for him, that means losing some of who he is. And I don't see him like that. And so here's what I would want you as my listeners to know. Don't ever underestimate the influence and impact that you as men have in your life and the lives of those around you. If you're a parent, especially a mother, don't underestimate how important relationships are with men in the lives of your children. Encourage and allow space for this. Don't inhibit or prevent a relationship with your children and their father. Don't alienate them. Don't talk shit about them. And I'm assuming they're not dangerous. Of course, if your children's father is dangerous, then protect your kids at all cost. Let's just say that and set that to the side. If that's not the situation, if the father isn't dangerous, then guess what, mothers and step mothers and stepfathers, you need to make sure that your children have space in their lives for a relationship with their dad. It is important.
the influence and impact they have on your children's lives is irreplaceable and invaluable. And if they don't have it, it leaves a void that will affect your children for the rest of their lives. So don't be that person. Don't be that parent. If you're a father and you feel like it's too late, like you screwed up, you made too many mistakes, you missed your chance, you missed your shot at being that dad that you wanted to be. Maybe you wanted to be different than the father you had. Maybe you wanted to be like a a father um, you'd never seen before, but wanted to make sure your kids had. Maybe you wanted to be like a father you saw on TV. If you feel like it's too late, it's not. You're never done being a father. Even if your kid is 25 or 45 or 65, they still need you. Reach out. Apologize for whatever you think you've done wrong. Own it. You can't make up lost years, but you can start where you're at now. You're never done being a father. And if you don't have kids yet, if you're a boy or a man listening to this podcast, if you don't have kids yet, and maybe you never will and don't really want to, that's fine. But be that role model to boys and men that do come into your life. Show some Gen Z kid how to change the oil in a car or put the spare tire on. Don't be that guy who sits around talking about how kids today are lazy or don't know anything or or don't know how to do stuff around the house like you grew up knowing. Don't be that guy. Pass on the knowledge. Teach them. Teach them how to unclog a toilet or a sink or how to use a hammer or drill or saw. Teach them how to treat the women in their lives. Men, we need you in our lives, and we cherish the unique perspective and gifts that you bring to the table. You are here for a reason. Honor yourselves. Honor yourselves by honoring your position in this world, and don't hold back from being vulnerable and vocal about what you're most passionate about. Speak up about injustice and abuse and violence against others. We need to hear from you. Hold your friends and other men accountable. Don't let others get away with being a dick. They're the ones who give all men a bad name. You know, Leonard Cohen wrote a line that said, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Don't be afraid of the cracks. Don't try to mask them with obnoxious masculinity and loud voices or numb them with alcohol or drugs or food or sex. Don't spend your life running so fast so people don't see your cracks. We need your light. Happy Father's Day. Thanks for tuning in. You can go to kellybargabas.com to reach out to listen to past episodes. I appreciate you. Until we meet again, take care.